Hello guys, today I want to talk to you about Laravel collections and I have quite a lot of examples gathered at my laravelexamples.com related to collection methods and I've picked five of them, more popular ones with examples so I would explain how they work, what are the actual usage examples of that it will be each, map, filter, push and also map with keys let's take a look how they work in real projects and the first example is map method and I have it as an example of Titan Nova packages with this sentence. So collection and then mapping through collection. If we click link to GitHub and open that full file, I will zoom it in a bit. So this is the array of project types. And then inside of that function, what do we do? First, transform the array into collection laravel collection and then map means that we are going through each of the items and then transform it into something else so the result of map is another collection with each collection item being equal to this what is returned so basically we're transforming this array to array of slugs so base dash resource resource dash tool and stuff like that and then we're transforming it back to the array and to demonstrate you the exact behavior, I've opened my Tinkerwell locally. You can use just general artisan Tinker instead of Tinkerwell. This is more visual for you guys on YouTube. So I've recreated the same class. And if I launch that, the result is this. So array of base dash resource something. So if you, for example, do something here, that is the result of sluggable string, string turn into slug. If, for example, we change this return, for example, to AAA dot something, everything will be prefixed with AAA. So see what map does. It's kind of like for each transforming this array or this collection into something else that you want. And collection methods like map allow you to not use the for each loop. So, for example, older version of doing the same thing would be, for example, slugs equals empty array and then for each for each of self project types as type then we do slugs new item of str slug type something like this right and then return slugs so same result but with a bit more code instead of having one sentence. And also collection methods are good for chaining them. So you can do map, then you can do two array, and then you can do something else all in one sentence. So map is just one example. Let's go to other examples. Another similar method to map is map with keys. So what if you want to return the new collection with keys? So not just the values, but the keys. And this is an example from Christoph Rumpel's Lara Streamers project, also open sourced on GitHub, and the link is here. And I will link, by the way, all of that in the description below. And here you have map with keys from the collection of uh, streams, of items. And then you do some magic here, and then you return the date as key and item as value. An example of that in my local, I've used the same, almost the same as project types in the previous just a minute ago, but transformed it in a multidimensional array, or in fact, it's transformed to collection. And what if you want to return not just sluggable those, but with IDs like this on the right? So you do map with keys and inside of that you return the array of key, which is name ID in this case, with value of whatever you want. The method number three that we will take a look at is filter. And here's an example of Andrew Schmelian Laravel job board, where it's the list of listings of like job board ads and then it's filtered by some conditions. So there is a listings collection, get from the database, and then filter. And filter method accepts the item of the collection and should return true or false. If it returns true, then nothing happens. If it returns false, then that item is taken away, deleted from that collection. So in this case, in listings collection, if that collection contains, if the title contains the query, the search query, then it is true. Okay. 
if the company contains the query, it's also true. If the location contains query, it's also true. Otherwise, it's false. And I have cloned that project locally. Here's how it looks, the job board. So I have added the search item, or let's start from the homepage. So there are 49 jobs seated. And if we search, for example, for Qui, there are 13 jobs because the filter works for us. So let's try to play around with that. Here's my code in the PHP storm. We can actually make it a bit shorter. So return true with three if statements, we could combine that into one. So return this or that or the other. So three conditions, listings, company, location or title and then probably we shouldn't have those if statements and let's see if we didn't break anything refresh same result 13 jobs so this is a bit shorter but you get the idea you should return true or false depending on some condition in this case lowering the title whatever it's uppercase or lowercase and comparing that to the search query keep in mind that all of those collection functions accept anonymous function closure function and if you want to pass parameters into that like in this case query you should use use because if we don't do that then the query parameter query variable would be undefined although it is defined in the same method in the same class but inside of anonymous function it is not seen until you actually pass it with use like this the next method that i wanted to show is each and i usually see that actually in the seeders of the data like in this job board as well so this one each on the collection is basically a shorter version of for each it would be for each in laravel or in eloquent or in just php so user factory create creates 20 users and then for each of that user and then function user is a parameter also we use use like in the example before that and then for each of the user would do some other action so we create a listing and then also there's each inside of that so even third level so for each of the user we create the listing and then for each of the listing again function listing is the parameter use tags so the same tags from here and then we add the tags to the listings so this is probably the best example of collection methods that are chained so you can combine this into one sentence which is pretty readable instead of doing for each then for each and then another for each finally i want to briefly show you the method push which means that you can push some item into your collection. So it's similar to the example where I showed for each and then adding the item into the collection without collection methods. So this is kind of similar and I would debate that this could be transformed into a map probably. So basically you have an empty collection and then for each of another collection from the database, you push some value into this collection. So just the collection relationship value, membership user to a specific array or specific collection, in fact, of users. And then with that collection, you can do whatever, like another collection method of unique by username. And this is an example from AgoraKit open source repository. So these are short examples of collection methods based on examples from open source repositories. And generally using those collection methods are kind of debatable. So you totally can get away without them. You can do for each and if statements and write step by step, or you can do it a bit shorter and chain the methods with collection methods. And until pretty recently, I was pretty skeptical about those collection methods. I was preferring to do that old style with PHP and for each and all of that. But lately, I've seen quite a lot of cool examples of collection methods, especially when they are chained into one sentence, pretty readable and shorter code. So I thought I would shoot this video with some examples to maybe convince you to at least try or take a look at the documentation of collection methods, which is actually in Laravel documentation, it's collections, and then you can go to available methods. There are a lot of methods. So if you go to map with keys, for example, you see this example, which is okay. But a better thing is to learn from real examples. That's why I've created that laravelexamples.com, which you can take a look. And one of the sections is collection methods. So I've gathered the examples from open source repositories and check them out. And if you want to support my mission of this Laravel examples and daily YouTube videos, 
you can check out one of the three products that you can see on the screen now, Admin Panel Generator, Live Wirecut Set of Components, and my courses on Teachable. And see you guys in the next daily video here on YouTube.